Today we're with Siobhan Craven Robbins. Thanks, Siobhan, for joining us today. Really pleased to. So, are you ready to launch into this? Yeah, go for it. So, your first question is Where in the world are you and why? Um, so, I'm based in London. Um, I've lived in London now for, gosh, let me think about it, about 28 years. Um, I'd say London is, is pretty much home for good. Um, I'm, so I'm originally from the, the UK, but from the Midlands, but I spent um, quite a bit of my childhood and teenage years in Africa, but definitely made London my, my home now. And I'm based over near Canary Wharf on the Isle of Dogs, right by the River Thames, which is oh, nice and lovely. sunny and sparkly today, unusual for January. Yeah, so I work from home. I always have done actually, um, ever since I founded my business 25 years ago. I think it's one of the advantages as a wedding planner is, you don't need an office, um, but I think it's also down to can you work from home that you're not going to get distracted by all the things people talk about, you know, emptying the dishwasher, watching this morning, waiting for your Ricardo shop, whatever it is. So, so I come into an office each day, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm working in my bedroom or my living room. This is my space. So um, it, it is like having a, um, a proper office. It's not, it was, doesn't feel totally like you work from home. No, so next question, what do you love about the industry and how did you get started? Okay, so um, how did I get started? Um, it was a real blinding flash moment. A um, little bit bored in my previous work. Um, had had some experience in organising events. Thought, how do people organise weddings? If they're based abroad and want to come back the UK to get married and that was my first initial thought on it mm -hmm. and those kind of clients still 25 years on I still get but the majority mm -hmm. of my clients are based in the UK and getting married in the UK um, so that was how I started 25 years ago this November coming and um, what do I love about the industry obviously I love my work um, I think it's pretty hard being self-employed but I love what I do and that usurps any of the kind of feelings of getting bored doing your own accounts or you know just being in an office it's a lot of administration as well um, but it, it's a happy industry and we do really work together as a team it's one of the things I, I always say about it the sort of analogy of that or, or comparison rather I should say that we work as individuals but actually we're part of a bigger team because you mm. need a photographer for a wedding you need a venue you need a cake maker etc um, and so it's those sorts of interactions that I enjoy and I like being in what you'd really call an artisan led industry as well who was your main client base when you were starting up and has that changed over the years so like I said in the previous um, question I did originally think when I this first had this idea of, of becoming um, a wedding planner or setting up this business that my clients would be people who were based abroad probably from the UK but mm -hmm. working abroad and wanting to come back here to get married and like I say, they do make up a portion of my clients, but probably only about 10%. My clients generally are based in London and the Southeast and getting married in the UK. But having said that, I also have clients who are based abroad coming here to get married. And I've also had clients based here who want to get married abroad. Yeah. But probably 80% of my business are the sort of working and living in London in their sort of mid thirties and getting married in, in the UK. And that's not really changed much mm. over the years. Mm. Well, that leads nicely to our next question, which was, who is one of your most famous clients? Can you describe their wedding and what was it like working with them? Okay, so oh gosh, there's been so many famous clients, you know, <laughs> I've, I've been fortunate over the years to, to have worked for, for many different well-known people I think the one that everybody sort of nobody doesn't know Joan Collins so mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to pick that as the most famous one mm -hmm. it was um, a glorious wedding and in Joan's own words um, this was her first proper wedding <laughs> and um, it really was it was it was such a great celebration we really put her and Percy's stamp on it they mm -hmm. were great I worked with them as a couple as well um, um, which is, is, is always fun when both are sort of equally involved, maybe in different aspects. Um, and yes, a beautiful wedding at Claridge's. They had the ceremony and the reception there. Uh, her favourite colour is lilac, so it was largely a sort of lilac theme to it. Um, a, a prevailing memory of that. I mean, obviously, you know, I knew Joan Collins was famous and wherever we went, you know, people would look. But I remember on the day of the wedding, um, obviously I'd arrived there quite early setting stuff up we've got 
quite full on security because a magazine was covering it. And my assistant saying, we, we were sort of ready to go, just come and look outside and going outside onto Brook Street where Claridge's is, is uh, situated. And suddenly there was just this row of, of crush barriers that had mm -hmm. been set up while I was indoors and three outside broadcast trucks and just crowds of people. And I'd say that was the moment when I thought, wow, <laughs> this is some wedding. Um, why did you co-found the National Association of Wedding Professionals, the NAWP? So um, along with the other two directors who, who founded it, we, we were all um, wedding planners. And as wedding planners, obviously, we deal with everybody in the industry because they're all part of the, the team that we work with to create weddings. Um, and so I'd say we really had as a wedding planner, you kind of have your finger on the pulse, so to speak, of, of what's happening in the industry and how people are feeling. And the NAWP was largely born out of a, a lot of sort of um, people feeling pretty, um, I don't know, dissatisfied post-recession mm -hmm. um, as to how the industry was. There was still um, a, um, people sort of undercutting Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of clients who were expecting deals or that they wouldn't have to pay the price that you quoted. And, and so we thought, what about something that actually celebrates the industry that recognizes the level of professionalism in it and good ethical trading as a business? And that really was the foundation of it. And obviously it's grown to so much more than that and the benefits are so much more than that. But the great thing is that it's now recognized as this sort of benchmark of good ethical business practice and, and um, a level of professionalism within the mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. And obviously our members go from, you know, ex-students here who, who, who have done my course mm -hmm. right through to those who've been in the business for 20 years or, or more. Um, so in terms of a network, it's, mm -hmm. it's got a great um, variety. It, it really is the full spectrum. So who has been a valuable role model in your life and why? Um, gosh, I, I don't know if they'd necessarily be one person that I'd call a role model. I think, you know, without question, if you've got great parents, mm -hmm. um, which I fortunately had, um are uh, they definitely influence you they're they're the foundation and i think what um good parents give you, you you just take for granted until you meet people who haven't had such a fortunate upbringing you know that that sort of foundation of, of confidence not overconfidence but just self-belief and confidence mm -hmm. and awareness of of other people and and just the, the sort of bigger picture of life mm -hmm. um i would say that is is what the balance of my two parents gave me. Um, and so I, I'd probably say that mm. they would be the main influence. And then I think as you go through life, you meet different people, don't you? And you just think, gosh, that person's a really nice person, or that person's mm. a really funny person, or that person's really innovative. And, you know, it, it brushes off on you. So I, I can't say that there's one person. I mm. think mm. You, you, know, you keep growing through life, through mm. the different people that you meet. And certainly as you mature, you, your thinking changes. And I suppose now you've become a role model for other people through not just the NAWP, but through the teaching. So what was it that led you into the teaching and what do you love about it? Well, it was you, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, no, obviously it, it, it was you. I think um, I once, some years ago, um, I had some business coaching, probably about 10 years ago. And one of the things that came out of it was that I should teach or lecture and that I have a great enjoyment of giving uh, or I get great enjoyment out of giving information. Um, so I think, yeah, to, to use um, uh, an appropriate word, the two married, so to speak. And obviously, knowing you, respecting you in the industry, the, the, the event school, um, all that you've built and done, your background, it, that, that's why I decided to teach through the event school London, because um, it's a bit like planning a wedding, that your team have to be as good as you and you as good as them. Mm -hmm. And I think that the same, I think, you know, the, the two of us work great together. The event school is a fabulous brand. The support you offer the students post course is brilliant. I love being involved in that too. So, so that's really it. And, and I do, I really, well, you know how much I enjoy it. I, I look forward to um, the week's teaching or the masterclasses and, and even virtually, you know, it's, it's been fine, but I look forward to getting back to real life. So what's your favorite topic to teach and why? 
I'd, I'd say my favorite topic is inspiration and I think that's obvious reasons you know mm-hmm. that's a big part of why we do what any of us are involved in the wedding industry do what we do because yes we we have ideas we love creating things we we're always looking for inspiration and um we're artistic you know we're creative um so I I think I I, I just love that and I'm I'm always uh, the students always comment how you know talk about each wedding I'm so infused because it's also this memory that I have of it as well um, but I do also really enjoy sort of teaching the basics of starting a business as well because I get excited thinking about they're going to be doing that mm. um, and, and also the fact that I'm teaching from 25 years experience when I'm able to give them as you know my courses are so anecdotal because for everything I teach I've got a real life example um, and I like being able to explain it in those terms as well and also hopefully help them to avoid the sort of pitfalls or mistakes that I made along the way too. You're so used to being so busy with the NAWP work, your own weddings that you plan and obviously the teaching. So uh, how have you spent your time, especially during this most recent lockdown? Gosh, well, since the pandemic, I spent my time in a way that I never thought I would and certainly not why I got into weddings. But um, as you know, a lot of the time has been spent um, lobbying government in various Mm -hmm. meetings with um, authorities and really giving some sort of voice to our industry, which has largely been through my role as a director in NAWP and all of us in NAWP have been involved in that. Um, but also the fact that I've had the longevity in the industry. Um, And then at the end of last year, the UK Weddings Task Force was Mm -hmm. formed, which is a industry appointed and government supported task force, Mm -hmm. which is a massive coming together of our industry and a huge achievement for everybody who's been involved in that. And, you know, it is hopefully going to be very instrumental in us getting our industry up and running. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I've been using the phrase kind of busy doing nothing a lot throughout this time because it's been so busy with all of that, but often has felt like it's been two steps forward and and one step back. Um, And yes, liaison and talking to people and Zoom meetings with politicians and yeah, role that I would never ever have um, anticipated for myself. Well, as we said, it's been a tough, past year for the wedding industry so who in your life is your rock or your support group or the people who keep you going gosh um obviously a few you know obviously my husband um mick um yeah you know that that's why you're you marry somebody or you're with they will have a partner isn't it because yeah that they're absolutely there for um support and objective views and being able to talk about things and um, and obviously, my friends, um, mm-hmm. I've, I've got great friends that I've accumulated over the years from literally all around the world. And, um, you know, we're, we're quite a tight group. And I think um, it's it's been important to still have that communication, even when you can't see each other. So, you know, probably two or three times a week, we have Zoom drinks with with friends and remarkable sometimes three and a half hours later wow. we're still on that call um it, it's as close as you get to them being in the room and so I think it's been really important to sustain that to have as, as much contact as we can or as much contact as we want um mm-hmm. because it would be so easy I think in some ways to come out of this and be almost hermit-like but yeah we're all obsessed with where we work at the moment. You know, do you have a desk in the corner of the kitchen? As people have built hermit sheds in the garden. So we can tell me a little bit about your current workspace, why you choose it, how it works for you. Yeah, so like I said earlier, yeah, I work from home. This is specifically my office with the, the consultation sofa, as I call it, behind. <laughs> um, but but um, when couples come and see me, they're sat on that. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Yes, it's nice. I've got a lovely view of the Thames right outside my window there. It, mm-hmm. It's a really nice working space. I've, I've moved. This is the third place I've lived in the 25 years I've had my wedding planning business. And I think actually this is my favourite out of the, the three offices. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I liked the first one as well because I had a separate consultation area, but this mm-hmm. is a little bit more mm-hmm. compact. Mm-hmm. And also now because, you know, I compare to when I started and I had four filing cabinets you know now it's it's a bookshelf and a box with stationery in and that's 
uh, about all I actually need to keep now. So, you know, the, the, the digital age sort of 25 years on um, has certainly reduced what you need as an office and Absolutely. the kind of space that you need. And also the aesthetic of it, because filing cabinets, let's face it, aren't the most attractive things. So the, there's more um, ability now or more space for you to make it. Um, how you want it it's not just filled with the practical stuff that you need in an office day what's your favorite part of the day oh I'm definitely not mornings so, um, <laughs> I'm not a morning person as everybody who knows me knows too well um so but you know I, I get up you know I'm in my office at 9 30 and I am awake at that point but um if you said my favorite time oh, Gosh, I suppose probably, yeah, early evening. I like that winding down. I like, mm -hmm. you know, coming out here, sitting down, having a drink with my husband and a chat about not an awful lot at the moment, but a chat <laughs> nevertheless. Um, but in terms of working in the morning, I tend to do the things that need to be done. So mm -hmm. like meetings or mm -hmm. um, documents that I've got to get back to people. I, my afternoon is my creative time. I'm far better at writing and having mm -hmm. ideas sort of around post lunch, like mm -hmm. almost two, three o'clock. And so sometimes, particularly if I've got stuff to write, I may go into the evening a bit as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's knowing your circadian rhythm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, when you kind of structure your, your day. Mm -hmm. I also know that I'm not, I'm better to have a whole day out of the office at meetings when we could do that then have to go out to a meeting in the middle of the day because it somehow disrupts my workflow mm. and then having complete days in my office which always end up being more um, productive too. Mm. Next question what is the most important lesson that life has taught you? I, I would say um, I'm not sure it's, it's a lesson or an observation but just look after your health. Health is, is mm. so important um, so, you know, it, it's a lottery um, and, you know, you're blessed if you go through life and don't have any serious health issues. But, you know, I've seen people very close to me affected through life. And obviously, as you get older, you lose friends as well. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you, you realise just absolutely it's, it's such a cliche, but cherish every day as much as you can, even when it seems a real dirge. There's, um, you know, we're lucky to be here, to have the friends we have, the, the, the life that we have, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'd say, and I think as you get older, you appreciate it more as well. And you, and you look back on that body you had at 25 that didn't ache when you got out of bed in the morning, that you didn't make that funny noise that every no, time you got up from the seat. Oh, <laughs> you know. um, question 14, we, we're slicing through these. Who would you invite to a dream dinner party? Oh, so I've got Julie Walters just because oh. I think she's the most amazing actress um, and just I love watching her interviewed she's mm -hmm. she's very grand very wise and just so clever at characters um, Debbie Harry and Chris Stein because everybody knows me knows I adore Blondie and um, have done for something like 44 years now and just uh, they're, they're insp inspirational, the music that they write. How do you write that music? I'd love that conversation. Um, and a recent addition would be Catherine O'Hara, but she'd have to come as Moira Rose from Schitt's Creek. <laughs> the best character that has ever been created. Um, John Irving, my favorite author. Mm -hmm. Golly, I'd, just, I'd love to just get inside that slightly bonkers head. Um, Victoria Wood, in, in my mind, the, the funniest woman, um, the funniest person on, on TV. And um, it's difficult, you know, women doing comedy, particular physical comedy. She nails it, absolutely. Tim Peake, because I'm a frustrated astronaut and just would, yeah, and I think he's great. I've seen him interviewed quite a few times. We, we've been to, to see him when he's talked and yeah, just a, a great guy, just reading his book now. And finally, Agatha Christie, the um, oh, adore her books. Again, how do you think up 90 odd plots as she did in 90 odd books? Um, just incredible. So well, yeah, that's my dinner party, eight people plus me. That's um, a nice table. We'd all get a chance to chat. That sounds incredible. Add me to the list because I definitely want to be there. That, that sounds brilliant. Um, we're scooting back over to a quick industry question now again. Um, what advice would you give to someone wanting to join or move forward in the wedding industry in 2021? 
obviously, um, it, the thing about, I'm say obviously, at the, you know, it's not a great time at the moment, but the thing about our industry is that it will always be there. People do want to get married. There's something like 200,000 weddings deferred from 2020 mm -hmm. now into 2021 obviously going to be spilling over into 2022. So it is a thriving industry. Um, and what I would say is during this time, you know, it's like students who've done the courses during this time, they, you know, it, it's been a kind of different because you can't go out and look at places, et cetera. But at the same time, all of them have utilized this time to get the groundwork done on their businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say is beneficial about right now thinking about Get, having a change because you've got the time to do that groundwork um mm -hmm. to get going mm -hmm. um but it's it's a great industry as you know marie you've, you've come along to various social things that i i i, I drag you along to and um very willingly it's, it's wonderful being in a creative industry mm -hmm. and they really are nice people in it you know yeah. a lot of them over 25 years have become friends too and um it, it's a nice industry to be in you know clients are happy it's a happy occasion it's not a difficult client relationship mm -hmm. it's not a fractious one it's it they want you to to do whatever you're doing for their wedding planning it for photographing it making their cake whatever they've chosen you because they love your work and um so yes it, it's a pleasurable relationship that all culminates in a great day you know you're you're really marking it's, it's a marker in their lives. We are nearly there. So what are, oh, what have been your guilty pleasures during sort of the last year and the different lockdown phases? Um, I have to say, I haven't felt guilty about any of them because <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a rubbish time. Um, but yeah, if you said, you know, what, what do I enjoy? I, I think like everybody, we've, we've been binge watching, which is something we ordinarily don't have the time to do. I've actually had the opportunity, I mean, I've always got a book on the go, but sometimes mm -hmm. a book may take me six weeks to get through um, because there isn't mm -hmm. the time to read. So I, I think I, I've not totaled up how many books I've read in the last 12 months, but I think that's probably going to be unprecedented. I've, I've never read so much. Um, and it's it's enjoyable and that list never diminishes there's always more books you still want to read which is a nice feeling actually um and yeah that that's been it I mean it's kind of the, the same old every day isn't it um and again those who know me know I, I love a whiskey and soda so mm -hmm. that's that's a, a pleasure at the end of the day mm -hmm. and kind of still marks that you've you've had a day and you're now going into your evening and it's not all kind of morphed into this um you know sort of 24 hour existence with no markers in it i guess um okay we're nearly there what words or phrases do you most overuse i think i say absolutely quite a bit <laughs> don't i um which you know is, is to acknowledge <laughs> that what somebody's saying is you agree with it and mm -hmm. um you, you endorse it so it, I guess it's a nice word of encouragement I hope I don't um and ah uh, too too much um she says I <laughs> you, when I watch myself back on tv every now and again you know not I don't mean when you're just watching an interview that I've just done you, that's always if I notice if I do that but apparently all, all the speech coaches will tell you it's natural it's part of the flow of speaking it's also your brain just catching mm -hmm. up about the next thing so you really shouldn't worry about it too much um but i don't know if i have any other it's, it's probably best to ask somebody else that because you don't observe those things i just know absolutely because I, I hear myself yeah when i watch you know interviews back or whatever that i say okay. that um, okay so now tell us something about yourself that people would be surprised to know oh it's a good one actually it's um i celebrated yeah i'm gonna do this one actually yeah um well, it, it sounds like a bit of a show off but it isn't um because he was just a really nice man he was a family friend but i celebrated my 11th birthday at david bowie's house in switzerland yeah, he's a family friend yeah well you've surprised me wow that's <laughs> that, that's incredible and did you realize at the time who he was and how famous he was not when we first met him when we met him i was about nine and um we met him going on holiday um, to Kenya and um, we were in the lounge at the airport. And I remember my dad saying to me, do you know who that is over there? 
and I looked over and I saw, oh, yes, it's that man from Dad's Army. I thought it was Ian Lavender. <laughs> There's a passing re resemblance. No, at, at nine, I didn't know who David Bowie was. And um, it was actually through that holiday um, that our families became friends. And, um, and I do remember not about a year after that, watching Top of the Pops on a Thursday evening, mm -hmm. as we all did, and David coming on and singing a song called Fashion and me yelling for my mum to come in the living room because David was on telly. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible. That, that's, that's, that is totally not the answer I was expecting. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got two more to go. So what would your superpower be? Oh, it, it's a difficult one, that, because I often think about it. And particularly when people drive badly or cut me up and I wish that I could flame through with my eyes and burn their tires <laughs> for them instantly. Um, uh, invisible is a good one, isn't it? Um, I think it's between being invisible and being able to fly. Mm -hmm. um, and being invisible, I don't mean it to be, you know, that you'd be spying on people. But again, you could just freak people out slightly, you know, when they're, they're being unpleasant, you know, just go and move things in their home or something. Um, but I also quite like the idea of being able to fly. And I, I frequently dream that I'm able to fly. <laughs> okay all right we're, we're seeing the dark side. well that's not a dark side really is it so here we are we're down to the last question who would play you in the film of your life that's a difficult one isn't it yeah because what do you yeah I suppose um I mean, when you talk about actresses that I, I admire, obviously mm -hmm. Judy Walters is there, Victoria mm -hmm. Wood is there now, Catherine O'Hara is there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Meryl Streep does a good portrayal of anybody. So probably her, and actually Nicole Kidman as well. And obviously mm -hmm. there's a striking mm -hmm. resemblance between me and Nicole Kidman. Um, <laughs> so yeah, maybe Nicole Kidman as the young me <laughs> and Meryl Streep as the older me. I would watch that movie. I would, yeah. I would, I think everyone <laughs> would. We'll all be there. <laughs> That's perfect. Well, look, thank you so much for playing 20 questions with us today. I'm not quite sure that we stuck to our time frame, but I think for a first, a first guinea pig on 20 questions, you've done very well. It was and great fun, Maria. Really good. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Thank you. Me too. I hope everyone who's out there watching has enjoyed it as much as that, that we have. And um, I'm sure I'll be seeing you again very soon. You will. All right. Take, take care. care. Bye.